UK stocks are well known as high dividend payers, and as everyone loves receiving dividends, they can be a tempting choice for investors. The problem is that, more often than not, retail investors like you and me can be drawn to UK stocks with high dividend yields that may well provide a good income, but terrible total returns when you consider the change in share price over time. Stocks that maintain a high dividend yield for a long time usually are very mature businesses with little to no prospects of growth, and in some cases, like British American Tobacco, they can operate in industries that are arguably in terminal decline. To illustrate the lack of growth offered by high yield UK stocks further, let's take a look at the iShares UK Dividend ETF, ticker IUKD. This ETF includes 50 UK stocks with leading dividend yields, so you may well think this will be a great ETF if you love dividends, and you'll certainly recognise most, if not all, of the holdings. Well, whilst it certainly has an attractive dividend yield of 5.29%, the total returns of this fund are absolutely terrible. The cumulative performance tab on the iShares website shows us that in 10 long years it has only had a total return of 30.24%. However, where the performance of high yield UK stocks becomes very apparent is when we switch to the annualised return tab, which shows us that the total return over the past 10 years annualised has only been 2.68%. When you consider the impact of inflation over the past 10 years as well, you'd have probably lost money in real terms by using this ETF. So with that in mind, if we still want to invest in UK dividend stocks, how do we select the companies that are more likely to deliver better total returns and avoid the trap of just selecting by dividend yield? Well, this is where something called factor investing comes in. Factor investing is a strategy of targeting stocks with specific characteristics such as quality, value and momentum. These characteristics have been identified by academics as explaining why some stocks offer better returns than others. Whether you're convinced by factor investing or not, you cannot argue with the data that stocks that meet these characteristics tend to outperform the market. We can see this by looking at this chart compiled by Stockopedia. Stockopedia give every stock on the market a regularly updated stock rank out of 100 based on the quality, value and momentum factors. And what they have found is that over the past 10 years, stocks with a high stock rank have significantly outperformed the market, whereas those with a low stock rank have significantly underperformed the market. We can also see the outperformance of dividend paying stocks that meet factor criteria by looking at the performance of an ETF. I have stated many times on this channel that one of my favourite ETFs is the Wisdom Tree Global Quality Dividend Growth ETF. Wisdom Tree have really highlighted the power of pairing dividend investing with factor investing. In particular, they show how dividend paying stocks that score highly on quality and momentum criteria tend to offer good returns. When compared to a standard developed world index tracker, we can see that the Wisdom Tree ETF actually beats the market. This makes clear that dividend investing, if done correctly, does not have to be a lower return game. At this point in the video, I was going to say that there was no UK stock only version of the Wisdom Tree ETF, but that has now changed, with one being released in the last week or so. Thank you Wisdom Tree for ruining my video. Jokes aside, this is a very exciting release and I'll be sure to do a video on it at some point. In the meantime, Ian Shadrach has done a great video looking at this ETF. I'll put a link to it in the description. ETFs are a great choice because they offer instant diversification and require little to no management time on your side. And I personally have the majority of my investments within ETFs. However, we can all be guilty of being tempted by individual stocks and it is good fun screening for stocks yourself. So in this video, I'll give an overview of free UK quality momentum dividend growth stocks. These are stocks that have not only grown their dividends in recent years, but also ones that score highly on quality and momentum criteria. I was originally going to go through five stocks, but I did not want to make the video too long. If you enjoy this video, please do let me know, and I'll be sure to do a follow up looking at more quality dividend growing stocks in the future. Of all factors, quality makes the most sense. It is quite simply the idea that profitable companies with high returns on equity and low financial leverage tend to outperform their peers. And as Wisdom Tree has proven with their ETFs, when paired with the momentum factor, quality dividend growing stocks can deliver great total returns. Applying these filters gives you a much better chance of picking dividend stock winners than just being drawn to high dividend yields. Before I begin, please remember my videos are not financial advice or a recommendation to invest in any of the stocks featured. Stock picking comes with greater risks than investing through funds, and I am making this video for informational and entertainment purposes. Past performance does not guarantee future results, and when investing, your capital is at risk. To find stocks that met the criteria for this video, I use Stockopedia's screening tool. 
I created my own screen and included FTSE 100 and FTSE 250 companies. So I wanted both large and mid cap UK stocks to be included. I wanted stocks that have grown their dividends in recent years. So I added a filter for dividend per share, compound annual growth rate of at least over 5% over the past five years. And in order to filter out junk stocks, I added a quality filter to only include stocks that have a quality rating above 90. And finally, to make sure I found stocks that are improving, I added a momentum screen as well. Altogether, my UK quality momentum dividend growth screen returned nine results. From this point, I used my own discretion to pick three stocks that I thought would be interesting to go through in a video. However, you can see all nine on screen now if you want to look into them yourself. As mentioned, if this video does well, I'll happily make further videos going through the other results. And if you want to make your own screen or apply a factor investing approach to your own stock picking and improve your chances of picking winners, as a viewer of my channel, you can get a 25% discount on your first subscription to Stockopedia. The stock ranks, alongside the neatly presented stock reports, give you the information you need to make more informed investing decisions and a much better chance of beating the market. In addition to the 25% discount, you'll also get a 14-day free trial and a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you really cannot go too wrong by giving it a try. You'll find a link to this offer in the description or alternatively, you can use the code TP25 at checkout. Without further ado, the first stock I'll look at is Games Workshop, the manufacturer of miniature war games best known for its Warhammer products, with the ticker GAW on the London Stock Exchange. As I will show, the performance of this business is nothing but exceptional, and for those out of the loop, it may be very surprising that a company in this niche has delivered such great returns. It is currently the fifth largest company in the FTSE 250 index, with a market cap of over £3.5 billion. Taking a look at the latest results in their annual report for 2023, we can see that across all financial metrics, Games Workshop has performed well. Of note, core revenue was up from £386.8 million in 2022 to £445.4 million in 2023. And core operating profit was up from 131.7 million to 148.2 million. Most importantly, earnings per share was up from 391.3 pence to 409.7 pence. You'll also see the massive dividend increase here as well, but I'll return to that later. For now, what is clear is that Games Workshop has had some good results. Games Workshop has not just had one impressive year though, and by looking at the financial summary from 2018 to present on Stockopedia, we can see that Games Workshop has had year after year of growth. The compound annual growth rate on the right here shows double digit annual growth across all metrics over the past five years, which is incredibly impressive, and growth is expected to continue, with a net profit of 147 million forecast for 2024 and 150 million forecast for 2025. What makes Games Workshop such a great business with a positive outlook? is its valuable intellectual property, Warhammer, and its growing body of fans all around the world, which will always be interested in purchasing new products. This combined with their low costs and consistently high operating margins means that Games Workshop is able to continuously generate large amounts of cash. Alongside their core miniature business, which brings out new products and focuses on keeping quality high, Games Workshop outlined in their strategic report that they are constantly looking to grow their licensing income from opportunities to use our IP in other markets. This could be licenses to make movies, live action series, or video games, all based on Warhammer. For example, you have the Total War Warhammer video games, among many others, which have been a great success. And Games Workshop are also in negotiations with Amazon Studios at the moment, with it being mentioned that Henry Cavill is set to star in a Warhammer movie or TV show. Not only does this generate revenue through the licensing fee, but it also indirectly leads to many more miniature sales, as someone who plays the games or watches the films are then much more likely to be tempted to go and buy the miniatures afterwards. Putting all this together, Games Workshop is an exceptional business with great future prospects, and I could have made a video on this company alone. As someone who is not a war games hobbyist myself, I have to admit I was very surprised but also very impressed by its performance. Moving on to look at the dividend history, we can clearly see a general trend of the dividend per share increasing each year. It's not as simple as it increases every year, but it's clear the general direction is upwards. This chart only goes up to 2022, but returning to the annual report, we can see that the 2023 dividend per share was 415 pence, which is an incredible 45% higher than the 285 pence paid in 2022. And over the past five years, Games Workshop has had a dividend per share compound annual growth rate of 16.72%, so undeniably a dividend grower. Looking at those key dividend statistics, 
the forward dividend yield for Games Workshop currently stands at 4.02% and the payout ratio stands at 101.37%. Now normally a payout ratio above 100% would be a red flag because it means a company is paying out more than it earns, but in the case of Games Workshop, it's nothing to worry about too much. They have a policy of paying out truly surplus cash to shareholders. Regarding this payout ratio, they've been able to pay out more than their earnings due to their great cash position. This chart shows it perfectly. They entered the year with £71.4 million in cash, and even after paying out their massive dividend, the companies increased their cash position to £90.2 million. And looking across at their balance sheet, we can see that their net debt figure is negative, meaning they have more cash than debt. So in the case of Games Workshop, the payout ratio being above 100% is really nothing to worry about. They are undeniably in a very strong position, with a very healthy balance sheet. Although it may mean that next year's dividend may not increase, or only increase by a small amount though, so that's something to consider. So that is the dividend, but what about the share price performance? Well you'll not be surprised by this point to hear that Games Workshop has delivered exceptional returns in that regard as well. Over the past 5 years it is up an incredible 240.48%. You can see the big dip in 2022 when a lot of stocks did badly, but it has recovered very well since then. And more recently, in the year to date, the share price is up 19.82%. When you combine this performance with the great dividend payments as well, the total return that Games Workshop has offered to shareholders is nothing short of remarkable. The final thing I'll look at for each stock in this video are those factor ranks, and overall stock ranks provided by Stockopedia. Given the filters I applied to find these stocks, all of them will score highly on quality and momentum, and in the case of Games Workshop, it has a score of 97 out of 100 for quality and 91 for momentum. That high quality score is the result of the incredible returns on capital employed and equity, as well as the operating margin of 36.15%, not to mention the incredibly sound balance sheet. You can't really get a much more quality company than Games Workshop. The momentum score is high due to the great share price performance and earnings per share growth. However, you will notice that the overall stock rank is being brought down by the low value rank of 16, and that is due to the stock being expensive on almost every valuation metric, as shown on screen now. However, I'm not surprised to see that this stock is expensive, given the high quality and exceptional track record of the business. You do have to pay premium prices for premium businesses. You'll notice throughout this video that value ranks will often be low, as that is usually the case for quality businesses, and they do tend to provide good returns in the long run despite this, although nothing's guaranteed. So although you should definitely pay attention to valuations, just keep in mind that it is very normal for high quality businesses to be expensive. So I'm editing this video the day after, and Games Workshop has suffered a 10% dip this morning, as a response to a trading update stating they are in line with expectations. This is a perfect example of the danger of high PE stocks. Sometimes in line with expectations is not enough and people want to hear above expectations. This does not change my thoughts on Games Workshop as a business overall and I personally think long term investors will still be fine but it's just a reminder of why valuations matter. People expect a lot of high valued companies. If you are a fan of Games Workshop you might see this dip as a good entry opportunity. I spent a long time on this stock, but to sum up, I've put all the key statistics on screen now. Although you should take analyst ratings with a pinch of salt, they currently have it down as a strong buy and have a price target of 11,512 pence, which is 8.2% above the current price. And finally, for those interested in investing, to qualify for the next dividend, you'll need to hold GAW by the X dividend date, which is on the 18th of January, 2024. Before I move on to the next quality dividend growth stock, if you're enjoying the video, be sure to tap that like button. It's greatly appreciated and really helps my channel. Thank you. The next stock I'll look at is Relx, the information and analytics company with the ticker REL on the London Stock Exchange. It is one of the largest companies listed on the London Stock Exchange with a current market cap of nearly £58 billion, which puts it in ninth place on the FTSE 100. Taking a look at their latest investor presentation, Relx is split into four main segments, risk, scientific, technical and medical, legal and exhibitions. And in each of these segments, they hold leading market positions with strong revenue and operating profit growth across the board. The financial summary of RELCs for half one of 2023 is also very promising with operating profit and earnings per share at constant currency experiencing double digit growth at 16% and 14% respectively. Slide 11 shows that recent growth falls nicely within a long track record of growth over many years with the exception of 2020 and they've been able to maintain high margins for a while now with signs of it increasing further more recently 
which means it is a very profitable business. In regards to Outlook, they make reference to that buzzword, AI, and note their ability to leverage AI will be an important driver of their business going forward. And they are confident that their full year results will show growth rates above historical trends, which is good to hear, and positive statements like this are always a good sign for investors. Looking at the financial summary on Stockopedia, we can see that analysts are estimating an earnings per share growth rate of 28.6% for the full year of 2023, followed by EPS growth of 10.6% in 2024. So a lot of further growth is expected of RELCs. Another observation from these figures here is that although RELCs has a history of growth, the rate of growth really has accelerated in recent years, and the company's performing very well at the moment, hence its high score on the momentum factor. Turning to the dividend history, we can see that RELCs has a long track record of increasing its dividend amount per share, with it having increases year after year, aside from the blip in 2011. The dividend per share growth has been especially good in recent years, and for 2022, the full dividend amount per share was 54.6 pence. RELCs' dividend is split into two payments each year, an interim and a final payment, and whilst the final payment for 2023 has not been made yet, the interim dividend was up by 8%, and I think it is safe to assume that the final dividend payment will be up by a similar amount, which would confirm another great year for dividend growth. Over the past five years, the compound annual dividend per share growth rate of RELCs has been 6.74%, and given recent performance, it is very possible that this rate of growth is set to increase. Looking at the key dividend statistics, the forward dividend yield for RELCs is currently 2.06%, and the payout ratio is a modest 59.87%. So the dividend is very well covered by earnings already, and this combined with the fact that earnings are expected to increase, all things being well, RELCs has plenty of room for further dividend increases in coming years. Moving on to the share price performance, over the past five years, RELCs shares are up an impressive 92.05%, thus giving shareholders an amazing return. A lot of this great performance has occurred more recently, however, and on the year to date, RELCs is up a whopping 33.98%. So although the FTSE 100 has been pretty stagnant overall this year, the performance of RELCs goes to show that there are some gems to be found within the FTSE 100, and it's not all boring stagnation. Finally, looking at the factor ranks provided by Stockopedia, we can see that it has a quality rank of 94, driven by industry and market leading returns on capital employed and equity, as well as an impressive operating margin of 27.65%. It has a perfect momentum rank of 99, which is unsurprising given the share price performance and earnings per share forecasts. However, it does score poorly when it comes to value, and it is expensive across all valuation metrics. Although, like I said with Games Workshop, it is unsurprising that a stock with great recent performance is trading at a high valuation. And unlike Games Workshop, RELCs has double-digit EPS growth forecast, so that goes some way towards justifying the current price. Overall, it is the value rank that is dragging the overall stock rank down to 79, and whilst it should not completely put you off the stock, it is definitely something to consider before investing. As with any stock at a high valuation, if RELC does not meet expectations or beat them, then it has a lot of room to fall. Overall, RELCs is a big winner of the FTSE 100 this year, and it is a great quality dividend growing company. According to analysts, it's pretty much at their price target now, with the target being only 1.96% above the current price. However, it is still down as a buy, and it is trending towards a strong buy. The faded arrow shows where the consensus was three months ago. I'd not be surprised if analysts revised their price target upwards. But, as always, I wouldn't make a decision whether to invest purely by looking at what analysts are saying. If you decide you do want to invest in RELCs, make a note of the ex-dividend date, which is the 2nd of May 2024, for the final payment on the 5th of June 2024. The third and final stock I'll go through in this video is Rightmove, the UK's largest online property portal, with the ticker RMV on the London Stock Exchange. It's one of the smaller companies in the FTSE 100, with a current market cap of around £4.4 billion. Rightmove's half-year results for 2023 showed strong financial performance, with revenue up 10% versus 2022, underlying profit up 9%, and underlying earnings per share up 6%. The interim dividend for the year was also up, but I'll return to that shortly. Alongside dividends, Rightmove is also continuing to provide returns to shareholders through share buybacks, totaling £97.6 million. Put simply, a share buyback delivers returns to shareholders because if there are less shares available on the market, then earnings per share will increase. Another thing to note here is that Rightmove has an increasingly strong cash position, with 43.2 million in cash or cash equivalents on the books, and like Games Workshop, they have a negative net debt figure, meaning they're a very healthy company. 
Turning to the financial summary on Stockopedia, we can see that Rightmove is in a trend of growth, and except for the unsurprising dip in revenue and profits in 2020, net profit and EPS growth has been positive every year, with the five-year compound annual growth rate for earnings per share at a very impressive 8.53%. Looking forward, analysts are expecting an earnings per share growth rate of 6.23% for the full year 2023 and 5.3% in 2024, so growth is expected to continue. Returning to the half-year results report, Rightmove states that they see significant opportunities across all their business units and that they will modestly increase investment, whilst also maintaining their incredible profit margin of 70-72%. to 72%. They are very confident and expect this investment to result in double-digit revenue and profit growth in the medium term and beyond. So if that is to be believed, certainly a very positive outlook for Rightmove. Moving on to the dividend history, this chart may be a bit shocking at first with the big dip in 2018. However, in reality, this is not a dividend cut at all. In 2018, Rightmove did a 10 to 1 stock split, so investors would hold 10 shares for every one they held previously. Therefore, in order for this dividend per share chart to give an accurate representation, you'd need to multiply the dividend amount per share after 2018 by 10, and once you do that, you'll realise that Rightmove has continued to grow its dividend. Most recently, the dividend per share has increased from 2.8 pence per share in 2019 to 8.5 pence per share in 2022. And whilst the full dividend has not been paid yet for 2023, the interim dividend was up by 9% to 3.6p per ordinary share, and I would expect the final payment to be up by a similar amount as well, which means another great year of dividend growth for right move shareholders. Over the past five years, the compound annual dividend per share growth rate has been 7.94%, and it looks set to maintain a similar growth rate going forward. The forward dividend yield for Rightmove is 1.73%, and the payout ratio is a very modest 35.71%. So Rightmove has plenty of room for further dividend increases, even if earnings did not increase, but as shown in the forecasts, earnings are expected to increase. So I'd be very surprised if Rightmove doesn't continue to grow its dividend in the coming years. Looking at the share price performance, we can see that over the past five years, Rightmove is up by 26.56%, although it has been a pretty bumpy ride, with the noticeable dip during COVID when no one was buying a house, although it did recover very quickly. More recently on the year-to-date chart, Rightmove is up by 6.74%. You will notice that big dip recently in November. That was due to the announcement that CoStar Group had acquired On The Market, which is a key competitor for Rightmove, and thus investors were concerned that increased competition could impact revenue and profits going forward. However, it seems that fear has not lasted long, with the share price already being pretty much back to where it was before. The potential impact of competition from on the market is definitely something to look into, however, before deciding to invest. I personally feel Rightmove has a very strong position, and it will take a lot to stop their current momentum and market position. Finally, looking at the factor ranks on Stockopedia, Rightmove has a quality rank of 96 driven by a very strong balance sheet, incredibly high returns on capital employed and equity, as well as an equally ridiculous operating margin of 71.41%, so a very low cost business. Momentum is also unsurprisingly high at 93 given the share price performance and earnings per share forecasts. Yet again, it is another case of the value rank bringing the overall stock rank down. As I've said many times, you pay premium prices for premium businesses, and in my eyes, Rightmove is a premium business. A forward PE ratio of 21 does not stand out to me as ridiculously overvalued, and I do believe Rightmove has a lot of potential for further growth in the long run. I'm not overly put off by the current valuation, given its high quality, but it's definitely something to consider yourself. To sum up Rightmove, I've put all the key statistics on screen now, it's another growth stock in the FTSE 100, hidden among the more widely talked about boring low growth dividend payers. It ticks all the boxes of a quality dividend growth stock, and although there is danger from potential competition, it does seem to have a positive outlook. Analysts currently have a price target of 593.78 pence, which is 8.23% above the current price. However, it is worth remembering this is a short-term price target, and alongside other stocks in this video, they're not stocks I'd feel bad about holding for the long term. The analyst consensus surprisingly has this stock marked as a hold at the moment, although it is slightly moving towards a buy recently. Let me know what you think of Rightmove in the comments below. I'm going to disagree with the analyst on this one, and I'd lean towards a buy. If you decide you want to invest in Rightmove yourself, then you can make a note of the ex-dividend date, which is the 25th of April 2024, in order to receive the final payment on the 24th of May. So that is it for free UK quality dividend growth stocks. Apologies it is only 3 and not 5 as originally stated, 
Once I got doing the research and writing the script for this video, I realised that the video was going to be way too long if I stuck to five. I do thoroughly enjoy looking into these stocks though, and now that I use Stockopedia, it is also much easier for me to find all the information I need. So if this video gets a good response, I'll be sure to do another one in the future. Before bringing the video to an end, as always, I just want to go through a few things you should consider before investing in any of the stocks featured. Firstly, the most important thing to remember is that past performance does not guarantee future results. Whilst high quality companies are more likely than low quality companies to continue offering good returns, there is absolutely no guarantee that they will. Second, dividends are not guaranteed. It does not matter how long a company has grown its dividends for, dividends are optional and companies are under no obligation to pay them. Dividend growth is a good sign, but you should never take dividends for granted. That being said, I personally would be very surprised if any of the stocks featured in this video completely stopped their dividends anytime soon. Also, remember quality stocks have high valuations, which whilst can be justified because of their high quality, it does mean they have further to fall if they fail to deliver on expectations. It does not matter how good a company is, unforeseen events happen all the time. So although you shouldn't be put off just because of high valuations, you should always consider them and decide whether you are happy to pay the price they are currently trading at. And finally, in relation to Stockopedia, the factor ranks and stock rank should not be taken as a buy or sell recommendation. While Stockopedia has observed that stocks with a high stock rank tend to outperform the market, it is not as simple as every high ranking stock will be a winner, otherwise they'd be miracle workers. Never forget the importance of diversification. That is it for this video, I hope it's been enjoyable, I really enjoyed making it, if individual stocks are not for you and you'd rather stick to the diversification offered by an ETF, you might want to check out this video where I go through some of the most popular dividend ETFs available for UK investors. As always, thank you for watching.